boys and girls, welcome to the first English class of this new academic year. If you have the term 1 learning ladders textbook with you, turn with me to page 5. Let's look at unit 1. It is titled The Absent-Minded Scientist. It is an adapted version of the original story written by the great Rabindranath Tagore. You sure know who Tagore is, don't you? Yes, he is a celebrated Indian writer, a poet, a social reformer who is best known for his work Geetanjali that won him a Nobel Prize for Literature in the year 1913. Can you believe what a great honor that is? Because that was the first time an Indian or even a non-European was winning that prestigious award. The Absent-Minded Scientist is a hilarious short story written by Tagore. As the title suggests, it revolves around a brilliant scientist who has a problem with remembering things. He misplaces things, makes a fuss about it and blames others for it. If you haven't read the story already, I'd suggest that you pause the video, go back to your textbook and read the story. Remember, I'm here to facilitate your learning and you have to do your part. At the end of each lesson, we have a set of new words and their meanings. Please go through all of them and understand their meanings and try and use them in sentences. I'll help you with a couple of them. Irked. I-R-K-E-D. Irked, meaning irritated or bothered. How would you use irked in a sentence? I was so irked about staying home all day that I was looking forward to the lockdown to be lifted fast. This is what grin looks like. A broad smile, mostly showing off your teeth. Let's use that in a sentence. My mother made a delicious snack that brought a happy grin on my face. I'm sure you relate to that. Please go through the rest of the words that are in that section and try and use them in your own sentences. Moving on. Have you noticed that there are words that sound the same but they have different spellings and different meanings. They are called homophones. For example, C and C, S E E and S E A. I see with my eyes, the C is rough. The same pronunciation for two different words. One such example is given in the first exercise, and that is lose and lose, L O O S E and L O S E. L-O-O-S-E as in not tight, this t-shirt is loose for me. L-O-S-E as in unable to retain something or unable to win something. Example, I don't want to lose the car keys so keep it safe. Or I hate to lose a match. Let's look at the exercise. All you have to do is to remember the meanings and see which word fits right. The first one is, I have a dash tooth. I have a wobbly tooth, not tight. So what is the word there? Lose, L-O-O-S-E. The next one is, if we don't play well, we will dash the match. We will lose the match, L-O-S-E. Now look at the rest of them and it's easy for you to solve. Moving on, the next exercise is about another pair of words. These are not homophones, but sometimes we mix up these words. These are accept and accept. Accept as in excluding. Example, I like all colors except for black. Accept as in to receive. I accepted an invitation to the party. Now, if you remember the meanings of these words, you would be able to solve this exercise. And I'll give you the first example. Let's look at the first one. Everyone dash Tom went to the party. Everyone except Tom went to the party. The rest of it is for you to do. Following this, you have a comprehension section with a bunch of questions. If you try and answer them, you would know if you actually understood the story. If you find it difficult to answer any of those, you know what to do. Go back to the story and read it once again. All the best. 
Now let's go on to look at an interesting grammar section in this unit. This is on page 11. Here we are looking at types of sentences. What is a sentence? A sentence is a group of words that make complete sense. Here we are looking at four types of sentences. The first one is declarative or assertive sentence. Such kind of a sentence simply states a piece of information. Example, I live in India. The second type is an interrogative sentence. An interrogative sentence poses a question and ends with a question mark. Example, what is your name? The third type is exclamatory sentence that expresses a sudden emotion. Example, wow, we won the match. The fourth type is imperative sentence. This expresses a command or a request. Example, please get me the book or go away. There is an exercise that's given where you have to decide what kind of sentence each one is. Let's look at it. One, please come here. It's an imperative sentence, expresses a command or a request. Second one, go away, imperative sentence. Third one, where are you going? Easy, it's an interrogative sentence, asks a question. Fourth one, let's have coffee, imperative sentence. Fifth one, we are going out for a movie, declarative or assertive sentence. Sixth, I don't want to talk about it, declarative or assertive sentence. Seventh one, hurrah, dad bought me a new dog, exclamatory sentence. On page number 12, you see two more exercises. The first one is to change the given sentences into interrogative sentence. Example, Ali owns a dog. How do you make an interrogative sentence or a question out of this? What does Ali own? So go ahead and look at the rest of the sentences and do it by yourself. Then we have a section on communication. It's very important. It is about listening, speaking and writing. Follow the instructions and do it on your own. If you need help, take help from your teacher or your parents. That's all for the story section of this unit. The second part of the unit is a delightful poem called Daffodils written by William Wordsworth. Wordsworth is one of the greatest English poets of all time and Daffodils is a classic. You find this poem on pages 13 and 14 in your textbook. Go ahead and read the poem and by heart a few lines if you want to. You will not regret it. Now what is it about? The poem is about the poet who is clearly a nature lover who goes out on his walk and is arrested by the scene of daffodils dancing in a breeze. This made such a vivid picture in his mind that on days that he was feeling gloomy and not so great, he would think upon this and it would bring a smile on his face. I'm sure we don't see daffodils here. We, that's not a common flower in this part of the world. But we sure have good memories that we look back on and smile. So that's the takeaway for me from this poem. Like in all the stories and poems, we have a set of new words that are introduced at the end of it. So please go ahead and look at them. I'm sure you'll find a lot of words that are not in common use in our day-to-day -day English speaking. Let me look at a couple of them for you. One is pensive. Pensive means thoughtful. If you were to use that in a sentence, you would say, he had a pensive look on his face. The other one is solitude, the state of being alone. Let's use that in a sentence. We could say, solitude is a luxury for some people these days. From page 15 onwards, you will find some exercises that are given there. The first one is about using these new words in sentences. Go ahead and try them. The second one is about compound words. Now what are compound words? These are words that are formed by combining two separate words. In the exercise that's given there, you have two columns where you have to match 
the separate words to form sensible compound words. Let's try that. Column A has eight words, column B has another eight words. Let's try and match. First one, snow. Snow could go with flakes to form snowflakes. Second one, arm. Arm combined with chair gives you armchair. It's a sensible compound word. Third one, under. Let's match under with ground to form underground. Fourth, post. Post and man, postman. Fifth, stair. Stair and case, staircase. Sixth, black and male, blackmail. Seventh, sky and scraper, skyscraper. Eight, home and less, homeless. On page 16, you will find appreciation of the poem is basically a set of questions that will help you understand if you got the poem properly. Please go ahead and answer those questions. If your teacher instructs you to write down the answers, please do so because writing is also an important skill. Let's move on. There is a section on grammar that is given on page number 17 and this time we are dealing with parts of a sentence. A sentence has broadly two parts, a subject and a predicate. A subject is what the sentence talks about. And predicate gives information about the subject. It's basically the rest of the sentence. Uh, the bus has come. That's the example that's given in the textbook. What is the sentence talking about? The bus. So that is the subject. The subject is the bus. Has come is the predicate. It gives information about the bus. Now let's go on to the exercise section that's given below that and try and see what is the subject part and what is the predicate part. One, the sun sets in the west. What is this sentence talking about? The sun. So that's the subject. Subject is the sun. Predicate is the rest of the sentence sets in the west. Two, the earth revolves around the sun. The subject is the earth. Predicate is revolves around the sun. Third one, Sham and Harry have gone to the market. Subject, Sham and Harry. Predicate, have gone to the market. Fourth one, the children are playing in the park. Subject, the children. Predicate, are playing in the park. Fifth one, the policeman fired in the air to control the mob. Subject, the policeman. Predicate, fired in the air to control the mob. Sixth one, she bought a pair of gloves. Subject, she. Predicate, bought a pair of gloves. That's the end of unit one. I hope you enjoyed the story and the poem. See you later.